the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. My dear friends in the Lord, we will find in that first reading, St. Paul is afraid. Why? The Corinthians are very rich people. It's a port town. They've got philosophers, learned people. And he's going to tell them something which they will consider very stupid. And what is that? That he glories in the suffering, the death of Jesus. Now they must have heard. They are pagans. They must have heard. He was crucified like a criminal by the Romans. And yet, he has the courage to say that. Fear was there. But because he has to tell the word of God, he does it. Some of them are converted because of his teaching. God has told him to go to the pagans and he does that. Jesus will suffer that same thing. We'll talk about that after the gospel. And therefore he got courage from Jesus when he was in Capernaum. Let's examine our conscience shortly. When are we frightened and we give up our conscience? For example, if I'm a nurse, I cannot participate in an abortion. I cannot. Government has allowed that. There are rules according to conscience. No, I can't do that. If something goes wrong, then I have to help out. But not in an abortion. Okay. And I have to have the courage to say to them, in my conscience as a Catholic, we don't take part in abortion. Okay. Another thing. Maybe in public, where we are working, there is bribery going on, and you also participate in that bribery. It's wrong. It's false. We are afraid to say, no, I will not take a bribe. Sorry, don't give me that bribe. Don't. But the other guys are doing it in the office. So the papers don't move. Here is where Christian witness comes. Do I give that up? And finally, one last thing. We'll examine our conscience and be quiet. Sometimes we have our parties. And during our parties we talk, say a lot of things, and some people say even against the church, even against morality. I keep quiet because that's my friend who's saying it now, he or she. And if I oppose, I say, no, I don't agree to that. He or she is my friend, but I don't agree to that. I'm afraid I don't do that. Then I'm sinning in omission. But that person is going to get angry with me, is going to spoil my name, perhaps even attack me after that. But I have to do my duty gently, quietly. Let's stop for a moment, examine our conscience. In so many other instances, if we have been doing the sin of omission, not following God's law, but looking for human advantage, What's happening in our world today, I'll explain about that also after the gospel, is because of our evil ways. The viruses are all around. They are also inside us. But we'll talk more of that. And therefore, we have cut down trees. We put garbage into the sea. Plastics here and there. We have not bothered. And we have not opened our mouths. Only some activists, and they are killed. Even women, they are killed today for speaking out. But we have kept silent. So let's confess not only our sins, but also for the sins of our world of today and for our silence. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God living and reigning, world without end. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brethren, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God in lofty words of wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in much fear and trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our response shall be, Lord, how I love your law. Our response, Lord, Lord how, how I, I love, love your law. Lord, how I love your law. It is ever in my mind. Your command makes me wiser than my foes, for it is mine forever. Our response, Lord, Lord how, how I, I love, love your law. law. I have more insight than all who teach me, for I ponder your will. I have more understanding than the old, for I keep your precepts. Our response, Lord, Lord how, how I, I love, love your law. law. I turn my feet from evil paths to obey your word. I have not turned away from your decrees. You yourself have taught me. Our response, Lord, Lord how, how I, I love, love your law. Acclamation. Your words gladden the heart, O Lord. They give light to the eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And he went to the synagogue as his custom was on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. And there was given to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the book and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here also in your own country. And he said, Truly I say to you, 
No prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when there came a great famine over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. And none of them was cleansed but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. They rose up and put him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which the city was built that they might throw him down headlong. But passing to the midst of them, he went away. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in the Lord, you saw and you heard what happened in the synagogue. They were wondering at these words because in the synagogue were doctors of the law, very learned men, and Jesus spoke so well. And then he goes and spoils it all. And he knows what will come. It's not that he just did it by chance. No. He was targeting that because the house of Israel had become wicked. They had only one thing in their mind. We are coming from David's thing there. And from Abraham. And therefore nothing will happen to us. Whatever we do. We could have here go also this kind of attitude. We are with Francis Xavier. We are in this holy city. Whatever we do, nothing will happen. No, no, no. Surely not. This is false thinking. The church will not go along with this. Because we found in the Old Testament, punishment came. Not because God punishes. Because evil brings about this punishment. Let me explain this to you. I'm a scientist. I'm a psychologist, I'll tell you. And cancer cases. Doctors said, gone. They've been cured. I use also what is called the 12 tissue remedy. They're living today. And they're saying, Father, what is this? They've given us four months to live, one year to live, six months. Today we are living. Why? Because they attended inside to the unconscious negative feelings. This unconscious, any psychologist will tell you, removes a whole lot of energy from our body. Like when you study, you feel tired the next day. So when we go through emotional thing, we feel tired. The body gets tired, then the germs are stronger. This coronavirus, when I'd gone to Africa once before, it was called SARS. The germs are everywhere. They're inside our body. They're around. They're doing God's work, please. The coronavirus is not wrong. Who's wrong is we. When we do evil, we add to the sinfulness and therefore to our own tensions inside. I've cured this by doing what is called neuro-linguistic programming. People say, Father, I don't get cancer anymore now. It's gone. These tensions remove things. Evil removes the strength of the body. When we are morally evil, we don't fit in with the world order. We just celebrated the Feast of St. Augustine. He saw the seeds of God even in matter. So let's reflect on ourselves today. Make this reflection. If we don't remove evil, just this fright about coronavirus. The coronavirus is doing its job in nature. God has created these germs. They are doing their job. Please. It's when we are weak, our bodies are weak, then they take hold of us. Inside, our immune system is not strong, coming from evil. Just stop for a moment and ask yourselves, have I got the grace and courage to fight evil? First in my own self, in my own family if it is happening, 
in my neighborhood and also what is happening in our world of today. Young women are also being killed and targeted because they're speaking the truth like prophets of this religion and the other religion. God, Holy Spirit, give us that spirit you gave to Jesus in Capernaum in his own country that we may play our part to bring about a new world order of truth, of justice, of love, and of peace. Amen. And we'll pray for our world of today. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and the health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. And I would like to add, we pray that we remove evil from our individual lives, family lives, and public life, and that we speak out against evil. So we make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters, pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. To Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created human beings, and when they justly were condemned, in mercy you redeemed them through Christ our Lord. Through whom the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. 
holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Philip Neri our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. God will establish his kingdom of truth, of justice, of love, and of peace. Peace will come when human beings act in truth, in justice, and in love. Peace is a gift of the Holy Spirit, and when groups are seen to be that way, then there comes peace. We pray this prayer the Savior has given us, and pray for the peace of our world today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who has taken away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer to St. Francis Xavier. O devoted servant of God, St. Francis Xavier, your heart was burning with love for Jesus. Impelled by this love, you went from country to country and spent yourself unto death to proclaim the name of Jesus and the good news of salvation. That is why the Father filled you with glory in heaven and preserved your body from corruption here on earth. Filled with joy for these unique gifts, we join you in praising the Father. And now we ask your intercession for ourselves. Each one makes his or her petition privately. We ask you to obtain for us the fulfillment of these desires if they are pleasing to the Father. And for everything together with you, we praise the Father through Jesus in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the love and in the peace of Jesus. Thanks be to God.